Hey guys, Toy House here. With the release of Wrath of the Lich King Classic fast approaching and everyone furiously trying to figure out what they want to do, what class to play, what server is best, I wanted to make a guide on how to prepare for the launch of Wrath Classic. Now in this video there are nine major things to prepare and let's get started with the basics at number one choosing your class. Now I won't go into each class in depth in this video, but the important thing about choosing a class in Wrath is that really it's not easy. There isn't a clear cut winner in terms of the best healer, the best tank, or the best DPS. Blizzard made their design philosophy for raiding in Wrath of the Lich King to bring the player to the raid, not the class. And there are lots of indicators of this design philosophy. Many classes have the exact same effects on raids. For example, replenishment talents which restore mana to the entire raid and multiple classes bring the exact same amount of raid wide spell damage buff increases. Now this all makes the choice of picking a class that much harder in Wrath. But Blizzard did reassure us that class was not going to be irrelevant in Wrath, which is true. There are still buffs and debuffs that are entirely unique to certain classes which will warrant bringing at least one of a certain specialization to your raid. For example, Demonology Warlocks have a spell power buff exclusive to their class and spec which stacks with every other buff. And of course, Shaman's Wrath of Air Totem provides spell haste which no other class can offer, in addition of course to that much wanted bloodlust or heroism, so there's still some class uniqueness. But that's not the only thing you need to consider when choosing your class because each class has a different playstyle, class fantasy, rotation, and when it comes to PvP, your class might perform way better or way worse than in PvE. I'll also mention though that certain classes have distinct niches where they perform very well. Death Knight tanks, for example, excel at tanking high amounts of spell damage and have incredible ranged single target threat generation. On the other hand, Druid tanks have extremely high HP and can survive high burst encounters. So while Blizzard aimed to homogenize classes, which we see lots of evidence of, especially with all tanks having very similar abilities, there are still distinct differences. Now, many experienced players consider Paladin the best class in Wrath, not because no other class can compete, but because every single one of their specializations is good. And don't get me wrong, some of their specializations are best in slot for certain roles. If you'd like a more in-depth preview and you have a few hours to spare, I made a full in-depth class picking guide, link in the description along with tier lists for DPS, healers, and tanks. It's all there. Now choosing your class is a tough choice for sure and with how long it takes to level, it's a super important decision as well, so it's worth thinking it through. This leads us straight to the next natural question in topic number two choosing your race. It's worth saying this up front, certain races will absolutely have an edge over other races whether it be in PvP or PvE and that's a big reason why it's another important thing to consider in preparation for Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Blizzard made dramatic changes in Wrath to almost every single racial ability in Burning Crusade. Major nerfs were dealt to Orcs' hardiness, weakening their PvP capabilities, but buffs were made to Blood Fury, Axe Specialization, and Command, and that makes Orc a very strong choice for PvE now when it comes to Horde, especially for Unholy Death Knights. One of the biggest changes to Horde was that Undead's Will of the Forsaken removed fears, charms, and sleeps, and granted 5 seconds of immunity to those effects but now in Wrath, it just removes them without providing that 5 seconds of immunity. It also shares a cooldown with the PvP trinket in Wrath. This racial is now outright worse than the newest and arguably biggest racial change in all of Wrath of the Lich King called Every Man For Himself. In Classic, this is being renamed to Will To Survive, but it still does the same thing removes all effects which cause loss of control of your character, whether that stuns, slows, incapacitation, you name it, everything. It's like Will of the Forsaken but better. 
Since it's outright better, you'll see all serious PvP players rolling human just for this racial. Now, since it shares a cooldown with PvP trinket, humans can and are encouraged to equip two powerful trinkets and still have a PvP trinket effect at the same time. On top of that, Wrath is known as the expansion with really powerful trinkets, so this is basically the perfect time to play human if you like PvP. Don't forget also that Blizzard is going to be offering a paid race and faction change in a future Wrath patch, but it is better to choose the right race off the bat instead of paying real money to fix that mistake later. On the PvE side of things, Drenai got some really amazing buffs. Gift of the Naru now scales with attack power or spell power and is instant cast. Heroic Presence now provides both 1% hit and 1% spell hit, but it is still a party-wide buff. This is just scratching the surface of all the racial changes that happened in Wrath. In the description, I'll have a link to two deep dive videos for every single race and their benefits and changes from Burning Crusade if you want a more in-depth summary. There's one video just specifically focused on Horde and one just for Alliance. And if you're enjoying this video, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button and hitting subscribe to support more videos like this. All right, moving on to our third topic, choosing your server. This is actually a really big decision, and if you choose wrong, you might end up on an imbalanced or dead server and need to transfer in order to keep playing with other people. You'll also need to decide if you want to play on a PvE server where you can't get ganked in the open world, or a PvP server where everything is fair game in the open world. There's also the unique opportunity with Wrath to roll on a fresh server or roll on server that are progressing from TBC to Wrath if you haven't been playing the game already. Most players who are coming back or want a fresh start will probably favor the new fresh Wrath servers, but other players who are sticking to the TBC to Wrath servers will probably tell you those servers will be dead within a few months of a release. Now, nobody can say for certain what the fate of the new fresh Wrath servers will be, but you can be sure that everyone will start on an even footing on those servers until Blizzard opens up transfers, boosts, and so on on those fresh servers. But until that, you know, anything can happen with those servers. So don't feel, in, you know, discouraged if that's what you want to do. It's also important to mention that most PvP servers at this point are basically PvE servers. With faction balance non-existent, most PvP servers are more than 90% one faction. So do some research, ironforge.pro, it's a great website. Choose the right faction on those servers so that you avoid being the only one on your faction and you can't find a group for anything. If you are actually interested in a legit, well-balanced PvP server, your options are limited. But I've heard only good things about Grobulus. It's also an RP server too, if that is your thing. So now that you've picked a server, let's talk about one of the most important things you need to decide, and that's number four, choosing your name. Most people can spend a long time trying to get that perfect name. You know, it's witty, it fits your class fantasy, and it makes your guildies laugh, or they give you a nickname because they refuse to say your character's name. There's so much fun to be had with naming your character, but because character names must be unique, there's a chance yours might be taken. So my advice to you is to prepare by start a list of your top names now so that when Wrath launches, you can get in right away. You can go through that list, try different things. You can also make a character beforehand to lock in or reserve your name if you're creating a new Death Knight on an existing realm or any class on an existing realm. For the fresh Wrath servers, Blizzard might opt to allow name creation two weeks prior to launch like they did with the original Classic WoW launch, but no announcement yet as of the date of this video's publishing if that's the case. So now that you've got your name handled, you've got to decide on your fifth topic, which is your appearance. In Wrath, we are blessed with a more powerful barber than we ever had before. We can even change the now quote body type, otherwise known as sex of your character from male to female or vice versa. However, this is going to cost a good chunk of gold, so it's better to know beforehand how you want your character to look to save yourself gold later. There's no new races in Wrath, so you can play around on the character creation screen now, adjusting hairstyle, face, and colors of both, but don't forget that Death Knights also come with new appearances exclusive to Death Knights, so maybe load up a private server and check those out too before you make your Death Knight. 
Now, while those last two tips might have seemed minor, this next one is a huge deal. Number six is choosing your professions. With the addition of profession passive and active bonuses, profession linking, and a ton of new recipes unlocked through profession daily quests, choosing your profession in Wrath is a really big decision, both in terms of a time investment and gold. So you really don't want to be in that situation where you have to unlearn a profession and start all over. Like the class picking section, I won't go into every single profession in depth. Just know that even gathering professions have bonuses now that make your character stronger. From a self-heal from herbalism to extra stamina from mining, gathering professions are now more than just for making gold and supplying your other primary profession. But these bonuses are considered very weak compared to what else is available. Engineering is considered the best profession in Wrath for the extensive amount of bonuses it provides in both PvP and PvE settings. Besides engineering, jewel crafting offers the most raw stats, followed by blacksmithing. Tailoring is also very good for its cloak embroideries, which can be best in slot depending on your class, offering massive spell or attack power procs. Jewel crafting is one of the most interesting of the professions in Wrath because almost all of the recipes are locked behind Dalaran Jewel Crafters tokens, which you acquire from doing daily quests or by prospecting titanium ore, which is really rare and therefore expensive. This means that Jewel Crafters can make a lot of gold by having certain gem cuts that no other jewel crafter has and early on in the expansion this will be amplified big time so jewel crafting is a solid choice in wrath for not only being a very powerful profession for min maxing but also for making gold but don't let the meta sway you if you were to ignore engineering most professions are pretty close in terms of profession specific bonuses inscription has your best in slot shoulder enchant which saves you from grinding exalted rep with the sons of hodir for the next best option and again similar stats to what you'd be getting from the jewel crafting only gems for example in the description i'll link to my profession picking guide that goes into extensive detail of all the profession bonuses and by the end you'll know which one to go for your class all right moving on to number seven you'll need to choose your add-ons. Add-ons are huge in WoW, from Questy to Deadly Boss Mods, Trade Skill Master to Gladius, there are so many add-ons that have become a must nowadays. There are add-on managers that can make it a lot easier to download and keep your add-ons up to date in bulk, such as CurseForge. Now, there are other add-on managers out there, but that's the one I personally use. You can also see which add-ons are the most popular, so you can see if you're missing out on something really helpful. That's actually how I found Leatrix and Bagnon and Bag Brother, which are all really helpful for either inventory management or when it comes to Leatrix, just a super useful add-on in general. I can't believe I played without it. Looking for group bulletin board add-on was a must in TBC, and it's to be seen if it's still going to be needed in Wrath Classic since Blizzard announced their own tool, which is supposed to be just like the add-on. And since we don't have Dungeon Finder, it looks like we're stuck with either of the two. And with your add-ons out of the way, we're on to number eight, choose your gold farm. Now there are an incredible amount of high priced items in Wrath, such as the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth, which costs 20,000 gold, along with all the Argent tournament mounts, which add up to another 2,500 gold. May Francis and Dalaran has even more mounts, which add up to another 3,500 gold if you want them all. If you're looking for the Mechjaneer's Chopper, it will cost you anywhere from 10k to 15k gold to get that crafted, and that's just if you're collecting mounts. There's also costs that everyone will probably pay, like Cold Weather Flying for a thousand gold, the Dalaran Teleport Ring, which is basically a hearthstone on your ring, is really handy and that's 8,000 gold, Dual Spec is a thousand gold too, and then Harris Pilton sells the Portable Hole, which is a 24 slot bag for 3,000 gold, and if you want to power level your professions because you don't have a gathering profession, well, that's going to be super expensive. So with all of that said, you'll need to find a few reliable ways to to generate gold consistently throughout Wrath. Now, I won't make an extensive list here, but there are tried and true methods for making gold in Wrath. 
mainly gathering professions like skinning, mining, herbalism, along with fishing and cooking are all great proven ways for generating gold. And if you don't have those professions, each profession actually has a lot of craftable BOE gear that you can sell. And if you happen to hate professions, then you could also farm Eternals, which are the wrath equivalent of the Burning Crusades primals, and it's definitely one of the best gold farms out there. Now, of course, there's also daily quests and other more niche gold farms, but this list should give you a good starting point with some of those, some of those ideas. If you want a super in-depth guide on a bunch of gold farms, I have a couple gold farm videos on the channel, which I'll also link in the description below to get you on your way to affording absolutely everything in Wrath. And with that, there's only one thing left to prepare. Coming in at number nine is IRL preparation. Whether you need to request off work, distance yourself from friends, or stock up on food, there's a few things you'll need to prepare for the official launch. Now, each person's situation is different, so make your IRL preparation checklist and make sure nothing is standing in your way during launch day. And of course, is any launch complete without entertainment on your second monitor? You could tune into Twitch TV forward slash Toy House to accompany you on your journey into Northrend. And with that, we've gone through the nine things you need to prepare for launch. I hope this video has given you some ideas that you can take action on and be more prepared for the launch of Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on launch day. Take care.